Let's understand the optimal technique of placing a three-piece IOL in the ciliary sulcus in a patient who has had a posterior capsular rupture during phacoemulsification. Let's briefly go through the surgery. We'll first demonstrate the occurrence of the PCR. We'll then demonstrate the technique of anterior vitrectomy. And once completed, we will then move to understanding the correct technique of loading and the safe implantation of a three-piece IOL in the ciliary sulcus. Let's move to watching the surgery. This is a patient with a posterior polar cataract. The nucleus disassembly and emulsification was uneventful. We start this video with watching the epinucleus removal. Towards the end of epinucleus removal, this is what we found. I saw an obliquely placed typical elliptical tear, fairly classic of a posterior polar cataract. In order to prevent the PCR from getting worse, I perform a viscofluid exchange prior to removing the phaco probe from the eye. Here's the magnified version of this classic PCR which has occurred here. The next step, as you can see, is performing the triabsilonastinide assisted anterior vitrectomy. This step aims at clearing the wound and the anterior chamber of the prolapsed vitreous and getting the eye ready for the implantation of the three-piece IOL in the ciliary sulcus. Moving to the anterior vitrectomy, it is imperative that we always cut the vitreous that has prolapsed out of the wound at the outset. We then proceed to cutting the vitreous from within the wound, from the anterior chamber and then continue to cut the vitreous in the plane of the pupil until it is completely cleared. This is what you will see in this part of the video. Following the completion of the anterior vitrectomy, the vitrectomy cutter and then the source of irrigation are removed from the eye. This is what the anterior chamber looks like when completely cleared of vitreous. Note that there is no peaking of the pupil, the pupil is uniformly round and there is no distortion of the edges of the PCR, both of which would signify the presence of residual vitreous in the anterior chamber and would necessitate some more anterior vitrectomy. Having completed the anterior vitrectomy, I now attempt to remove some of the peripheral cortex with the help of a bimanual irrigation aspiration. I ensure at all times that I keep the irrigation closer to the wound so as to not hydrate the vitreous further. So the prerequisites prior to implanting a three-piece IOL in the sulcus would be the following. One, you have to have a wound and an anterior chamber free of vitreous. The entire cortex should be removed. The anterior capsular rim should be intact to be able to enable a safe placement of the IOL over it in the ciliary sulcus. And it would be nice to have a pupil large enough to enable a clear visualization of the three-piece IOL as it is implanted in the ciliary sulcus. Having fulfilled all these prerequisites, let's now move to implanting the three-piece IOL in the ciliary sulcus. The first step is enlargement of the main incision. The 2.8 keratome entry is now enlarged with the help of a 3.2 mm keratome to a size of about 3.4 to 3.6 mm for ease of insertion of the cartridge tip within the wound. And this is because the cartridges that house the three-piece IOLs are significantly larger in circumference at the tip. Let's now move to understanding the correct technique of loading the three-piece IOL in the cartridge. After injecting some viscoelastic in the cartridge, the IOL held at the edge of the optic is introduced with the trailing haptic within the cartridge. At this point, it is extremely important to ascertain that the optic lies within the cartridge, 
with its concavity upwards. It's gradually pushed to lie in a more anterior position. Once the cartridge is secured within the injector, the plunger then pushes the optic anteriorly. It is brought as far forward as you can see so that the leading haptic comes to lie just adjacent to the tip of the nozzle. At this point, it's extremely important to know the exact orientation of the tip of the leading haptic. This is because it guides us as to what should be the orientation in which we introduce the nozzle into the eye so as to achieve the perfect unfolding of the IOL. Let's now move to the IOL insertion. Following the insertion of viscoelastic into the anterior chamber, counter pressure is afforded with the Sinsky hook. I'd like you to note the next step. Unlike a traditional monofocal IOL that we introduce into the capsular bag, which is often a wound-assisted IOL insertion, the tip of the nozzle in these three-piece IOL cartridges are encouraged to enter within the wound into the anterior chamber. The biggest advantage of this is the fact that now the tip of the leading haptic is closer to the anterior capsular rim, thereby enhancing the ease of its placement in the sulcus. I think that the placement of the trailing haptic over the anterior capsular rim in the sulcus is perhaps the most important step in the IOL insertion. Because once the trailing haptic has already found its place in the ciliary sulcus, it's extremely easy to just dial the rest of the IOL within the ciliary sulcus. Let's see how that's done. With the leading haptic now in the ciliary sulcus, the rest of the optic and the trailing haptic are injected into the eye. While injecting the optic, it's very important to support it with the Sinsky hook held behind it. The optic may need to be rotated to enable it achieve its perfect orientation. Almost always, you will find the trailing haptic outside the eye. Some more viscoelastic needs to be insufflated to deepen the anterior chamber prior to the rest of the insertion. With the help of a ball dialer held at the optic haptic junction, the IOL is then rotated into its correct position. In this case, the trailing haptic which was lying outside the eye has now come to lie into the anterior chamber at the 5 o'clock position. Some more viscoelastic, as you can see, has been inserted into the eye and a ball dialer held against the trailing optic haptic junction and turned in a clockwise direction successfully rotates the trailing haptic from the anterior chamber into the correct position, that is the ciliary sulcus. The optic is then centered. In high magnification, you can clearly see the following. A well-centered three-piece IOL in the ciliary sulcus, no change in the anatomical size of the PCR, an anterior chamber free of vitreous and a round pupil. Having achieved this, the excess viscoelastic is then removed from the anterior chamber and the main incision and the paracentesis incisions hydrated. This brings us to the end of this video tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.